Hello, so the poem that we'll be looking at today is called Amy Caroline by Rosemary Dobson. So this poem was published in the Cock Crow Collection, and it's basically a personal anecdote of Amy Caroline, who was the grandmother of Rosemary Dobson. Some key links to the human experience that you could consider as you are reading the poem are relationships, respect, and adversities. Again, as per usual, I want you to have a go at reading the poem on your own, and then pause this video, read it on your own, and then let's come back together and then discuss some macro techniques together. Let's start off by looking at some macro techniques that I've written on this slide here for you. So you need to make note of the fact that unlike other poems that we have studied thus far, Amy Caroline is written in one long stanza. And I think you could kind of think about this together with enjambment, in which the lines of the poem are enjambed. So it creates a sense of continuity. And it almost feels like, I think I've written it here, but you could connect it with this idea of storytelling, wherein it almost feels like there is an oral storytelling tone in which the persona, or more so Dobson, is telling us a story. And if they are telling us a story, it's usually like, you know, um, continuous. It's not jarring or it's not like reading a story. It's like oral storytelling. They are just telling us the story of their grandmother in a way that is very continuous. And that's basically been enhanced through the use of one stanza and also the use of enjambment. The next one that you could think about is the use of free verse. So there isn't a um, sense of regular meter or rhyme and therefore the lack of regularity is also adding to the notion of continuity that we have been talking about. Um, finally, another thing that you could think about is how this poem is anecdotal and it's written in uh, first person. So we start off with my grandmother and it's adding a more personal voice and it's making the poem to seem like more of a personal story um, and the delivery or the communication of a personal story of an individual. So it's as if Dobson is relaying to us her own experiences and her um, story for us to understand and sort of resonate with and again it's anecdotal because she is reflecting upon her experiences of reflecting upon her grandmother and it's also anecdotal because she's sharing her story of the lived experiences of her grandmother Amy Caroline. Now let's start from the top so again, make note of the fact that the title itself is a reference or an allusion to Amy Caroline, who is the grandmother of Dobson. So make note of how, once again, going back to the um, anecdote, it's an anecdotal poem. And if you remember on the previous page, we talked about how it's a first person anecdotal poem. And here that's reinforced through the use of personal pronoun. of my grandmother my grandmother living to be 90 so we have the commas here and essentially that's enclosing living to be 90 so you can make note of how the seizure is adding to the pride or like more so the proud tone of dobson who proclaims that her grandmother had lived to the old age of 90. Next, if we have a look, it says, met whatever chanced with kindness. Now, whatever chanced, I think you could make note of the diction of both sections here. So whatever, you could sort of talk about the diction of whatever, emphasizing like how she wasn't very selective. So she's not just like, okay, I'm going to be like um, kind to this person and then like not kind to that person kind of thing but whatever she was chanced with she would treat with kindness or approach with kindness and essentially emphasizing oops how oh, again she was non-selective in her kindness
And again, the diction of chanced is a little different if you're going to be writing about chanced, wherein the diction sort of implies a sense of um, unexpectedness. So it's not like, again, she'll only approach people with kindness upon, you know, when she invites people to dinner. But like, whatever she's chanced with, whatever she is faced with, whether it be expected or unexpected, she'll meet them with kindness. The next section, we have held her head. So we have the alliterative H sound. We also have the alliterative B sound that kind of follows here. So birds, bright eyes. One on one side, like a sparrow, that is, I think you would have talked about this a few times during high school, about biblical illusion. So it's like the sparrow that is a biblical illusion. And it's basically referring to this idea of insignificance. So a sparrow is basically seen as very insignificant, yet God is able to provide it with love and um, take care of this insignificant being or presence in this world. And essentially, when we have held her head on one side like a sparrow, had a bird's bright eye, it's sort of suggesting the difficulties or the adversities or like the insignificance of Amy Caroline within the broader world in which she's not like, someone who has succeeded in life. She's not someone who has achieved all these like amazing things there, like, you know, on the surface, but she's just a sparrow and she had a bird's bright eye. At dinner, I used to set an extra place for strangers. This is something that you could make note of in which, let's get rid of the biblical simile because I've already written it on the side. So you can make note of um, what we just talked about in regards to biblical illusion as biblical simile as well. But going back to what we were saying in regards to dinner and stranger, what we could talk about here is the, I would say like juxtaposition in which the connotations of dinner become subverted. So we think about dinner as more of a cordial event. So we kind of like um, invite people who are close to us to dinner. But essentially she is setting an extra place for strangers. So it's kind of subverting the connotations of cordiality or like not so cordiality, but like this idea of how dinner is where family gets together or like close people come together. Um, and again, that's suggesting the extent of her generosity and her benevolence. Then moving on, it says, this was done, she said, in Bendigo and Eagle Hawk. I'll come back to that because it's repeated at the later half of the poem. It was a custom she observed. In her thin house, that spoke aloud of every kind of weather. Now, I think this is quite important. So the thin house is a metaphor. Obviously, a house cannot be thin. Um, and we have a personification of how it spoke aloud of every kind of weather. So essentially, it's adding to the imagery. If your house is thin, it's sort of like capturing the notion that like the house that you're living in is not one that is very like um, new or it's not one that is very strongly built. It's one that is very thin and it gets influenced or impacted a lot by the weather of the day. So it spoke aloud of every kind of weather. So when it's thundering, like it feels like the house will be like blown away and like whatever, whatever, like that kind of thing. So the imagery is adding to the idea of adversity in which they're not seemingly financially well off or stable. Yet what you need to make note of is how there is a juxtaposition between that kind of idea of adversity, like financial struggle, with this idea of um, 
giving. But I think what's more important is I've given you here the words like put out scattered or also like scattered crumbs. It's going back to this idea of frugality. I think that kind of frugality is more evident in these two where we have scattered crumbs and like saved. So it's not like they are living in abundance and they are able to just like, you know, oh yeah, like let's feed the lizards or like let's give the birds some food or whatever, whatever. It's this idea of frugality in which they, they are, well, Amy Caroline is giving, right? So she's giving. And we sort of see this idea of like, you know, caring and love in which she's like providing to the lizards and like the wrens and whatever and then you know she's watering the geraniums however there is a sense of frugality that is being enhanced so she's not giving it from a position of abundance but she's um, giving from a position of struggle and adversity If that's the case, then what you need to consider is it's emphasizing her benevolence, right? Where it's not that you are giving just because you have so much to give, but you're giving um, with just a kind heart. Um, another thing that you could make note of is there's a lot of naturalistic kind of references or imagery here and we have the reference to the lizard wrens which is a bird and we also have um the geraniums and basically what you could think about is again i think we're going back to this idea of giving so giving to those more in need so essentially the kindness the very act in which although she is struggling and although she's not in a very financially abundant position she is still willing to give to those who are more in need i.e the lizards and like the wrens who are just part of the natural world um and then the next section we have at twilight at the meditative hour so we have like a symbolic time so it's set in twilight or well, more so like at twilight um symbolic and you could also make note of this idea of meditative hour this idea of in between and um dobson she is reflecting upon the life of her grandmother in that meditative hour at twilight as she's thinking about um her grandmother who was perched on the piano stool in semi-dark again this idea of like in-betweenness right meditative um, she likes to strum the songs learned long ago so essentially there's this idea of being in that meditative hour being within that semi-dark period um, Dobson is reflecting upon her own grandmother who was also in the same time perched on um, the piano stool as she strummed the songs learned long ago in Bendigo and Eagle Hawk. Now in regards to like the repeated reference to Bendigo and Eagle Hawk, what I want you to make note of is there's a re reference to this idea of Australian rural culture. And possibly etiquette as well. So essentially, it's suggesting how the Australian rural culture and etiquette, and like I think we also had the word custom here at the top. So Australian rural culture, etiquette, custom has shaped the titular persona's perception and approach to the world. So we'll come back to this because I want to kind of talk about this here but i just want you to make note of how this is going back to the idea of how an individual's culture 
and an individual's experience within a particular culture and custom or tradition is able to heavily um, influence an individual's perception or approach to the world and how they present themselves to the world essentially so the idea of you know kindness and whatever whatever that we have talked about in regards to amy caroline is one that she has learnt from her involvement in her australian rural culture and etiquette now let's go to the next section so she had eight children little money and many griefs so you can make note of here Ascendant. It's an ascendantic structure, right? So there's no um, conjunction, but we are just being joined by commas. And you can make note of like the contrast or the juxtaposition here. So essentially by or through this juxtaposition and contrast and statistic structure, what we're able to find out, to not find out, but like what Dobson is able to achieve per se is emphasize the notion that like Amy Caroline had truly struggled. Um, so it's adding to the adversity. So adding to. Essentially because it's not like she had a lot of money, little grief, right? But it's more like, she, it's like the opposite. Like the circumstances are a lot more difficult in which she's struggling financially. And she has eight children. So she has eight mouths to feed at home. And then she has many griefs that accompany the um, emotional and the financial war. Well, the grief is the emotional struggle or instability that is um, a result of the financial struggle that she must endure. And basically, you need to make note of how then, although she has struggled so much, remember the whole thing that we have talked about in regards to like benevolence and generosity. We see how Dobson's grandmother, Amy Caroline, had approached situations of or like the whole experiences of, ad of adversity not through pessimism, but rather through benevolence and generosity. And that's something that you could make note of in regards to human experience, right? But by having this ascendant in here, and just like the whole thing about twilight and the meditative hour, that adds to the sense of reflection that Dobson is engaging in in the life of her own grandmother, we kind of see a degree of respect. I'll write it here. So respect... So we're in, Dobson is showcasing her love and respect through her own grandmother who had overcome all the adversities in her life through kindness and generosity. And again, not pessimism. So a link to the human experience that you can make here maybe is that perhaps that difficulties and adversities are not only all about suffering, but there could also be beauty that can be attained through benevolence. So that's something that you can make note of. I'll write that down for you in the next slide. Um, and then we have the next section where we have the Nafra of she was sorry she never had a jinka and a horse. So the Nafra um, of she emphasizing this kind of juxtaposition in which um, Dobson is kind of detaching herself from her grandmother. Like she was sorry she never had a jinka. So emphasizing again, she's separating her experience from her grandmother adding to this idea of like admiration and respect again like she's sort of like oh like my grandmother like she has um experienced all this like this was her life and i kind of respect her for that kind of thing she was sorry is also a short sentence it's kind of truncated in comparison to like the longer lines that preceded and then she never had a jinka and a horse to drive about in the roads of her own something that you can make note of here is Firstly, you could make note of like the diction of never. So it's sort of like she never had a jinkai and a horse. 
but it's this idea of of her own. It's I think quite a good link to this idea of um well it's more like a good link to Cockro. And the reason why it's a good link to Cockro is because Dobson is connecting her own experiences of motherhood and like her own female experience that she has depicted in Cockro with the female experience of her grandmother who could not even have a jinka and horse of her own, i.e. she wasn't living for herself. She was living for other people. So living for other people. This idea of obligations that had bound her experience um, to a particular individual um, and she couldn't actually live out her life as herself. But essentially what I want you to make note of is Dobson, like the whole like oral storytelling tone that we have talked about at the very beginning, um, she, through reflecting upon the experiences of her grandmother, she's able to gain a better understanding of herself and possibly her female experience. So um, she is reflecting and telling us a story of basically her or well, yeah so she's telling us a story basically or she's telling us her reflection or her experience of reflecting upon the life of her own grandmother and essentially what you need to make note of is it is how it is through reflecting upon the life the lives of other people how sometimes we will able to find a better understanding of ourselves so um, reflection doesn't always have to be like about ourselves it doesn't always have to happen like internally or like introspectively about our own life but it could happen in uh, well it could be about someone else and that might be able to provide or shed more insight about us now the paragraph writing task that I want you to have a go at doing today is what ideas on adverse cities does the poem Amy Caroline explore? And basically, there are a lot of different things that we have talked about and a lot of things that you could sort of write about. Essentially, you could think about this idea of um, overcoming So going back to some keywords from the rubric, maybe you could think about how um, the poem is challenging our assumption of adversities in which we kind of associate adversities as being something that is very difficult and whatnot. However, we kind of see how Dobson's grandmother, Amy Caroline, the titular persona, has um, been able to overcome these adversities, not through just being very pessimistic and like just hating on her life, but rather through acting out of generosity and acting out of benev benevolence. Um, some other things that you could make note of is in connection to that, like you could also make note of things like the rural Australian Essentially, how an individual's ability to kind of overcome adversities come from their experience with their own custom and tradition and culture and etiquette, basically. So, Amy Caroline has learned this optimistic sort of general optimis optimism and also this idea of like generosity and benevolence through her engagement or through her involvement in the Australian etiquette and culture. And that's essentially something that you could also consider. Um, another thing is how possibly the idea of how um, I 
then these are some other ideas that you might be able to write about. So um, you can always find beauty. So it's more about perception. So again, it's going back to this idea of optimism, right? So you're not like just going to be hating on your life, being like, oh my God, like my life is so bad um, during times of adversity, but you're able to find beauty within moments of, or live, or you're able to find beauty in a life that is full of adversities and challenges as well. Another thing is essentially how the reflection upon the adversities of other people, so i.e. the opposite reflecting upon the adversity of her own grandmother is able to enable an individual to confront or gain the courage to be able to overcome their own set of adversities. So it could be courage or it could be that like it provides a sense of consolation in which you kind of recognize the universality of the human experience and that enables you to go forward in overcoming the struggles and challenges that you have in your own life. So again, top, um, topic sentence. One to four, not one to four, four analyses and a concluding sentence. You could include a context sentence um, separately or as just part of your analyses and it would be fine. So that is the end of this video and I'll see you in the next video.